Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznuz here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about smart ways you can use or spend your GP in RuneScape 3. This is a question I often get a ton on my videos or get messaged on Discord with people asking me, hey, I have 200 mil, what should I buy next? Here's my account, here are my stats. Or, hey, I just made 800 mil from Roxa, what should I buy next? Here's my account. Or, hey, should I save my GP until I have enough for this item or that item? Well, in this video, I'm going to try to answer those questions as best I can, so make sure you hit the subscribe button since over 70% of you aren't subscribed, and my pet Melvin has dreams of going to college, and every subscription gets him one step closer. Firstly, one of the smartest ways you can spend your money in RuneScape is investing in your account. Now, this sounds simple, but this will not only help you in the long term instead of going and buying items right away, but it's also more optimal. So for instance, so many people ask me, what gear should I buy next? They say, hey, I have a noxious staff. I have Virtus. Should I get the staff of Sliske next? Should I get Tectonic? What's the best? And then they send me their account and gear. And what do I notice? Well, firstly, I notice they don't have overload. They don't have archaeology relics. Maybe they don't have ancient invention even unlocked. Their gear isn't perked at all. This happens way more than you'd think. And in reality, investing in getting your skills up is insanely important for PVM. These people are often struggling with PVM and feel like, hey, it's my weapon. I must have to get a better weapon. Or maybe I need to go upgrade my armor and then I'll then I'll deal more DPS. I have people that comment, hey, how are you hitting 8Ks? How are you hitting uh, 9Ks? I've seen people say, I've never hit over a 4k in runescape and i have tier 90s and uh, i think some of this is why we used to have this thing back in the day in like 2012 2013 or maybe even before then that where if you wanted to pvm or your ultimate goal was to you know get to pvm and do some of the harder bosses your big goal before you could do that was to have overloads a pack yak and curses back then this was the ultimate goal we wanted to get this before we actually really focused in on our gear and that's honestly a great sentiment to go by even in today's game when you're progressing your account and you're trying to figure out the best things to spend your money on. The core skills are extremely important, especially as I assume most of you are trying to spend your money to progress your account for PVM. In this case, spending your gold to get Herbler up, to unlock better overloads, better adrenaline potions, or getting your summoning up so you can use something like a Ripper Demon, or getting your archaeology up so you can unlock some of the new relics or ancient invention, because again, perks are so important, or getting your prayer up so you can unlock curses, all these should take a good priority over simply just spending a huge amount to upgrade from like a tier 85 to a tier 90 or something like that. Here's an example, for instance for me, I guarantee you if you gave me an account that had tier 80s, soul split, overloads, and a Ripper demon so tier 80s but then they had you know prayer up herbler up summoning up or you gave me an account that had a tier 92 but had normal prayers extreme potions no ripper demon i feel like i'd definitely do better and get faster kill times on the account with tier 80s with like ancient invention perks rather than you know an account with a tier 92 it's just those small little things those support skills are actually huge for pvm so investing in those early and often is going to be a very smart way of spending your money rather than rushing to try to get the new best weapon. Now let's say you're somebody that does have overloads unlocked and you do have the skills that I mentioned unlocked and you think you have a decent bit of PVM gear. Well investing in supplies is always a great investment in my opinion if you go and PVM a lot. So for instance I went and spent a ton of money recently on overloads, adrenaline potions, incense sticks, familiars, summoning scrolls, viswax, everything that I need for PVM. I went and stocked up a ton on it, spent a lot of time making potions. So now I don't really have to worry about going and buying or making a bunch of potions for quite a while. It's also something that motivates me to PVM more often because I have everything stocked up. I have everything right there available for me. I don't need to go and make a few potions before I go PVM. I don't, you know, that's always the worst feeling when you're like, all right, I'm ready to PVM. I'm excited. Then you're like, oh, I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have this. And you have to go make these supplies or buy these supplies. Getting stocked up on this stuff is a really good use of your money if your plan is to start getting deep into pvm now if you don't want to pvm at all ever then obviously uh you're probably not going to be wanting to do this but i think most of you watching this video uh that's what you like to do in runescape 
So let's say you've invested a good bit of money into your skills and you feel like you have a good base of skills to PVM with. Now maybe you're not maxed or anything like that, but you have a good portion of the stuff I mentioned before. Well now we get to another section, which is untradeables and abilities. Again, this is something I would prioritize too. I get constantly asked about upgrading tiers of weapons or buying super high tier armor, but investing your gold into overpowered abilities and untradeables can be some of the best money you've ever spent and completely change how you feel about PVM. So for instance, I'd say my biggest single damage increase, my biggest single help to PVM, increasing my confidence, letting me feel like, hey, I can deal some good damage. I go and do these tough bosses. That was investing one bill into Greater Ricochet. This dramatically increased my damage, it had a ripple effect where using Hydrix Bolts dramatically increased my adrenaline gain, sure it was a huge hit on my cash stack and a big amount of money that kind of just disappeared, and that can be scary I know, if you only have a certain amount of money, dropping a ton of it on something that essentially kind of disappears that you can't resell is a big commitment, but a lot of them are very very worth. For instance, if I go back to that crossroads almost two years ago when I got Greater Ricochet. At the time, I think I had Ascension Crossbows, which was about like 300 mil. So Blight Bounds were actually back then, I think around like 1.8 bill or so. So I could have essentially maybe sold my Ascensions and bought Blightbound Crossbows. This would have cost me a little bit more than Greater Ricochet to do. I could have done that and gotten a tier 92 weapon from a tier 90 or buy Greater Ricochet, and I think I, I would definitely be in a far worse place if I bought those Blightbounds. Even if, let's say, I could theoretically get a tier 95, like the Bow of the Last Guardian, which I can't afford, but let's say you could get that instead of, you know, like an Ascension Crossbow or or, or Noxious Longbow, I still think getting Greater Ricochet would be do more for my account and more for my damage uh, than getting that weapon upgrade. Often, you know, either it's new players or players coming back, you think, hey, weapons, 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 armor, these are the things that I have to focus on. In reality, RuneScape's a game of stats. We're used to being like, hey, does this have bigger stats than this? Does this weapon have bigger damage than this weapon? But all the things that kind of go along with it are often more important than, you know, the tier of the weapon or armor itself. Another thing I often see is people being scared a little bit to spend money on, you know, supplies like I mentioned or things that kind of degrade or cost a little bit more to use. For instance, a lot of people, I, I've, I've had comments of people saying, I wanna get an essence of finality, but it costs so much power to use. I just, I'm just scared to do it. I think I'm just gonna lose too much money. But I see this often as people kind of cutting themselves short. They're kind of blocking themselves in and not allowing themselves to go into the higher tier gear, to get into the gear like an EOF that's going to help you so much when it comes to doing bosses uh, like Raksha, Arch Glacier, those higher tier bosses. Now I understand if you're just doing like God Wars 2 or God Wars 1, maybe you don't want to go for an EOF right away or use an EOF there because it costs a decent bit. But in reality, that 800k per hour that an EOF is going to cost you is going to help you so much in terms of getting better at PVMing and allowing you to actually do those higher tier bosses. If you look at the things that are expensive, a lot of the times, you know, there's spells that are expensive. There's ammo like Hydrix Bolts that are expensive. If I said, uh, eh, Hydrix Bolts too expensive, uh, eh, EOF a little too expensive to use, I would have never even been doing bosses that were hard, like hard mode Karapek or Raksha or Zuck. I would have never been doing those because I wouldn't have had that, uh, that really good gear or items. So you're kind of blocking yourself out. You're you're keeping yourself from doing those bosses by, by thinking, hey, I just can't use those items. They're too expensive. So to that point, I basically say, don't be afraid to spend some money. Don't be afraid to use things that are seen as a little bit expensive. Now, there of course are extremes. Don't go with a ripper, demon, incense sticks, penance powder, um, chuck 30 vulnerability bombs and use an EOF at Vindicta. But I mean, there are extremes to every case, so you definitely don't wanna do something like that or do that at like Bandos. But if you're going to a boss that's gonna make you 30 mil an hour, you know, spending a few mil an hour to make those kills faster, smoother, I mean, to make up for one lost kill, it's definitely worth it. But let's say you're somebody that, you know, is kind of just wanting to save their money a little. Maybe you wanna save up for a Fractured Seth of Armadale. Maybe you already have, you know, you already have a lot of this stuff on this list and it's a good 
good time to get, you know, a really high tier weapon like a Fractured Staff of Armadel, Bow of the Last Guardians, Sarah and Godbow, something pretty expensive that you're saving for. If you decide you are going to save up for something, making your money work for you is one of the best things that you can do in RuneScape, and there are a ton of ways you can achieve this. So instead of your, letting your money just sit there and essentially just lose value because of inflation in the game, uh, what you can do is you can do a few things. So first, you can try item flipping. This is, of course, where you go to the GE, you purchase some items for a lower price, you sell them for a higher price. Of course, it's much deeper than this. There's strategy strategies and stuff, but you can do this every day. Uh, pretty, you know, you don't have to be super knowledgeable to flip items. I have a guide on it that I'll link in the description, but it's a nice thing you can do to make some decent money. And it actually takes your, you know, if you have 1 billion GP, you can actually afford to buy some pretty expensive items that can make you, you know, a few mil here or there, 10, 20 mil a day or more that you wouldn't have made if your money is just sitting there and you don't have to put that much effort into it. There are things like buying alkables to put in an auto alker machine, uh, buying, you know, herbs and uh, vials of water to put in a partial potion producer, those invention machines. Those are things that you can basically uh, invest money into and your money kind of will just slowly gain money, almost investing in like, uh, almost investing like a stock. You don't, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, I don't really want to have my, you know, money, my savings just sat there doing nothing. Investing it is probably the best way to go. And in RuneScape with things like flipping and things like, you know, the auto alker and stuff like that, you don't really run much of a risk at all in losing money. You can lose money if you go into merching, but flipping is a lot more safe. And of course, the invention machines are absolutely safe. You're, if you buy the right things, especially the auto alker, you're not going to lose any money. You're going to always make money. So some of these ways to make sure that you're actually, you know, growing your money that's just sitting there. So it's not just losing money to inflation. And my last point is kind of back to the untradables, but don't be afraid to spend a good amount of money on expensive invention perks. I know invention perks, you know, again, it can feel like, hey, uh, this probably isn't worth it or or these kind of disappear. They're an add on to my weapon. But what if I get a new weapon? Well, you can always get those invention perks back with an equipment separator. You will have to do a bit of leveling, but those perks will stay with you. You can keep those perks forever uh, and put them on different weapons as you, you know, upgrade your weapons. But often than not, I'm pretty sure a tier 85 weapon with no perks or a tier 85 weapon with uh, ancient invention perks like precise six equilibrium four is better than a tier 90 with no perks at all invention perks are extremely powerful and something you definitely don't want to sleep on as well as this other stuff so yeah, just to recap, if I was somebody coming back wanting to progress my account for PVM and didn't know how to spend a lot of my money, I would focus on skills first, like the core combat skills I mentioned. Then I would go into getting an okay weapon, uh, wouldn't go straight for like a tier 92 or anything, and then make sure I get those untradeables, those abilities and things like that. And then when I wanted to finally get to the tier 90s, tier 92, start upgrading my armor, I would make sure that I always uh, get good perks to go along with those. And while I was saving, I would invest my money to try to make sure that I'm still gaining money while I'm in the process of saving. So that's kind of how I would go about spending money on RuneScape 3. I hope this helped you guys out. Uh, you know, again, I've gotten a lot of comments about this either on stream, Discord, or my YouTube comments. So I thought it might help you guys out. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like the video if you like content like this. And uh, yeah, if you want to see actually how to upgrade your gear and good ways to upgrade your gear, you can click here on the end screen. And this video kind of shows you how to upgrade your gear and uh, in, in, a, in a good way to kind of uh, know what you're doing.